These days in Halifax, you don't have to go far to stumble into a new housing development. Old buildings are going down and new buildings are coming up, and often, these new buildings are much bigger than what they replaced. With their increased size, these new buildings are creating more places for Halifax's growing population to live. There's no denying it, Halifax is getting much taller. But is this just some natural occurrence like an adolescent growth spurt? Or is it something else? Halifax has grown in the past, and it didn't always grow up. It may have grown sideways or oblong, but it never grew taller in such a consistent way as we're seeing now. So, what's fostering this vertical growth? There are many factors, some economic, social, or environmental, that considered together can help explain why this is happening. To help make sense of them, we put together a list of the five big reasons why Halifax is getting taller. The first, the population of Halifax is increasing, and this is adding stress to the housing market. To ease that stress, new housing has got to be built. But population growth alone can't explain the taller buildings being built, because, well, Halifax has always been growing. The difference of late is that the population is growing faster. Between 2007 and 2015, the population growth rate varied between 0.3% and 1%. Then in 2016, the rate of growth essentially doubled and has hovered around 2% ever since. I know we're talking about a measly difference of 1% here, but that 1% change means around 4,000 additional people moving to the region each year, each of them needing a place to live. Theoretically speaking, the construction of new housing should match the number of new people moving to the city. But this isn't always the case. Recently, population growth has been outpacing housing growth. So it starts to make sense why we're seeing taller buildings in Halifax. Simply put, it's the quickest and most efficient way to build housing for the growing population. But we see that it's not just population growth that leads to taller buildings. It's the rate of growth. And still, this is just one factor. Reason number two. Some people have called it the urban renaissance, others have called it gentrification. But either way you slice it, beginning sometime in the 1990s or early 2000s, housing preferences for Canadians became more diverse. And some people began opting out of the spacious suburban dream and opting instead for the tight quarters of downtown neighborhoods. City living had become appealing again for the middle class. Before that, in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, the Halifax Peninsula had actually reduced in population as the dominant social preference was for living in the suburbs not to mention the forced demolition and eviction of the residents of Africa. And though the 60s, 70s, and 80s saw the construction of some iconic towers in the South End, perhaps most embodied by the building formerly known as Fenwick Tower, those decades primarily saw the growth of low-density, single-family housing in communities like Rockingham, Clayton Park, Fairview, Armdale, and Spryfield. And this happened for a large part because that's what enough people wanted. In 2015, research by Grant and Gregory found that the desire of people to return to the Halifax Peninsula in the 1990s and 2000s was influenced primarily by changing consumer preferences and external market conditions, specifically due to the growth in university enrollment and changing cultural ideals about urban living. By this, they meant that city living had become desirable. If more and more people want to move to the center of the city, eventually housing developers will find a way to make that happen. And since there's only so much space to go around, the way to fit more people onto the same amount of space is to build up, up, up. The third reason that Halifax is growing up is that policy, or what we might call planning, has encouraged it to do so. Halifax's new policy, the Centre Plan, reflects the widely held belief in city planning circles that denser, and therefore taller, neighbourhoods are the best solution to our collective housing woes. At its core, it's a philosophy of efficiency. It's the belief that shared benefits arise when more people live in compact neighborhoods. If more people live close to grocery stores, parks, hospitals, or restaurants, it becomes more efficient for the government to optimize its investment in public services like roads and sidewalks. But it isn't just about civic efficiency. It's equally about sustainability, because it also supports active and sustainable ways of living when people can self-propel themselves on their daily activities. 
The center plan has encouraged taller buildings in Halifax and Dartmouth as the best solution to provide housing for the growing population. And when we say best solution, it must be considered in comparison to what would be built otherwise, which could likely be further and further sprawl that stretches the efficiency of public services and creates a dependency on cars. The policy goals of Centre Plan are clearly necessary if taller buildings are going to get built, but they really rely on our first two reasons, population growth and a desire in some of these people to actually live in tall buildings. And even still, these three can't completely explain why taller buildings are being built. Our next two reasons will consider the people that actually build the buildings. Reason number four, profit imperative. It isn't cheap, easy, or quick to build housing. The upfront costs of land acquisition, designing the thing, and political stick handling, and then finally constructing it are nothing to sneeze at. Adding insult to injury, the geological foundation of Halifax and Dartmouth is pyritic slate, a rock type that is extremely costly to blast and remove. It's pretty simple. Private development will only be pursued if it can make money. With every increasing cost that goes into a project, like the increasing cost of land or removing expensive rubble, there's going to be a higher expectation for profit. And how do you get more profit? Well, you can build taller. Since you've already paid for the blasting, the foundation, the cost of the land, every floor of housing that you add on top increases with a greater margin the end profit. Not only do taller buildings make more profit, they're further incentivized by current interest rates in Canada. Following the global financial crash of 2008, Canadian interest rates plummeted to near zero and have fluctuated between 0.25% and 1.75%. And since the COVID-19 pandemic, rates have stuck low at 0.25%. A lower interest rate makes larger loans more enticing to borrowers, and lending conditions are what we might call favorable. With lower interest rates, we can expect that larger sums will be borrowed, and thus, construction projects of larger scale will be undertaken. Low interest rates make those upfront costs a little more palatable, but there's no getting around the fact that millions of dollars need to be spent before any money is made on the sale or rental of housing. Housing development takes a lot of money and a lot of time, and for each floor that you add to a building, the project becomes just that much more fiscally practical. Our fifth reason for tall buildings is the availability of land. Typically, housing development occurs either as greenfield, meaning on previously undeveloped land like farms or forest, or it's developed as infill, meaning previously developed places like parking lots or older buildings already within the fabric of the city are redeveloped as housing. As the city has grown, suitable land for housing development has become scarcer and scarcer, and the best locations for greenfield development, meaning those with favorable geography and proximity to city services, have mostly been used up. And with the easy options off the table, infill development in the city has become more and more attractive as an alternative. But in comparison to greenfield, infill development will often come with a higher land cost and the requirement of demolition of what is already there. In order to balance these costs, it's often required for the developer to build to a certain height in order to make it profitable. So it's not to say that we've used up all the potential greenfield land, far from it. Just that we've used up the easiest greenfield and the balance of costs in the profit equation has tipped in favor of infill development in the city. So, you've got more people moving to Halifax, a desire in some of these people to live in the urban center, planning policy that encourages height, strong financial incentive, and limitations on available land. And there you have it, five reasons why Halifax is getting taller. When you walk around the city and you see cranes here, and bulldozers there, and hard hats bobbing, what you're seeing is the end result of many largely invisible forces that have come together to create the conditions for taller buildings to be built. No one reason can explain Halifax's growth spurt, but we think these five are the most important.